in yesterday's video, I showed up that if you are a piece down, doesn't matter. And you can still convert that into a winning position thanks to your pawn structure. Pushing the pawns along with your king activity, you can win an end game despite a piece down. And that was uh, the highlight of yesterday's video. And this one is a complete opposite to that. I was a piece up here and I dominated it throughout, making sure that I don't give a chance to my opponent to bounce back ever in the game whatsoever. So I hope you enjoy the video till the end and it is instructive for you as well. Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and let me take you through, through this game which I played today. I was playing as white here. I started off with d4, open response with d5, bishop to g5 played by me now, making sure the open cannot play pawn forward straight away. So open plays knight to c6 and I play c3 here making sure my pawn is extra protected uh, and the pawn structure is already nice queen can have some active squares as well here open plays a bishop to f5 and trying to de develop on the queen side be just because my bishop is annoying and not allowing e6 to be played and that's why bishop cannot come out uh, to a natural square which can be uh, e7 or even d6 and then the knight and then castling so open is understanding that I might spoil the pawn structure if the knight comes out. So open is trying to develop the other pieces meanwhile. So I went with e3 here. Open finally plays h6 as, I, as my bishop was annoying. And I just bring it back to h4, continue it to be annoying for the opponent. Which forces my opponent to play g5. Uh, and I always believe that whenever you play h6 and g5, you are just weakening up your king's side completely. And that can be taken advantage of. And that's what I do in this game. I went back with bishop to g3. Open now. Fian kettles the bishop on to g7. And now I go with h4. Asking opponent to either take. And again my bishop will be annoying. Or I take. And we trade of the rooks. Is one another way. When open can take back with the bishop of course. But then the opponent will not be able to cast on the king side for sure. Meanwhile, my structure on the queen side, pawn structure is nice. I just need to develop my knight and put my queen out uh, on either of the squares and then castle on the queen side. And already, thanks to the open file, I can just uh, attack with my pawn storm and even get the other rook active because of castling. It will come in on to e1 eventually. Uh, can break through from the open as well. So lots of options for white from there on. Open plays a bishop to g6, which is nothing of a move. Uh, maybe open was thinking that if i just put my bishop the open doesn't have to take can take back with the pawn maybe that idea or maybe just tr trying to prevent a move like uh, h5 maybe provoking a move like h5 so that i don't trade and the files remain closed because if i place h5 open can simply place back the bishop onto f5 and now i have closed the pawn uh, structure myself so open structure is nice so here i take on open takes back i take the rook open takes back and now comes bishop to d3, asking to trade out the bishops straight away. I don't want these bishop pair to line up towards the queen side. Sorry for the wrong arrow. Uh, because that's my plan of castling. And I don't want my king to be on the side where both the bishops are lining up. So I try to exchange the light square bishops, which open does trade. No other option, actually. If the open goes other way, then I can simply take back to the queen. Open cannot push back and if I take pawn structure gets spoiled further, double pawns, that to double isolated pawns, that would be bad. So I took on here, open now pushes for e5, making sure that uh, open can sometime play e4, which blocks my queen's diagonal, uh, maybe trying to break open the center, but e5 comes with some threats, pawn takes and it's defended with the bishop as well, if I take with the queen somehow, knight is also there. So, Lots of options there. Maybe then queen is coming on to e e6, e7 as well and then casting on the queen side. But here open missed out one important thing. The queen is still active and here comes queen to h7. And now if you see, you cannot save both the pieces anyhow. No move saves both the pieces. If you try to defend the bishop with the queen, then again your knight hangs. If you try to save the bishop, your knight hangs. If you try to save the knight, your bishop hangs. So one of the piece is going down for sure. And here open plays a knight to e7. Uh, that was even more bad a way of defending this knight, I would say. Because what you're doing is the only piece that was developed properly 
on a natural square. They just got that back as well. So I took the bishop, open now takes the pawn. And now another smart thing which I did here was take this pawn with the queen. I want my queen out in that and in action. Let's just get back the queen. Now I'm willing to trade off queens. I'm plus three already. Uh, thanks to taking the bishop and rest, everything is equal. But I have better pawn structure as well as compared to the opponent. Here, open places queen on d7, preparing to castle. I develop the knight to f3, which attacks a pawn as well. Uh, and now I'm trying to go to e5 as well with my knight, which will attack queen 2. Open plays f6. Nice move there. Because there is no light square bishop with me and my queen is also on dark square. So I cannot really make use of this diagonal towards the king somehow uh, and attack uh, the king with the with the check with my light square bishop or queen. So f6 made a lot of sense. Again, preventing knight uh, going to e5 as well. Here I play knight to a3. Uh, my idea was to maybe then put back my knight onto uh, c2 and then go back to b4. And meanwhile, I'll castle on the queen side as well. Open uh, places knight to c6 now, attacking the queen. Now queen has to be saved. I place queen on a4, pinning the knight uh, kind of because I'm happy to trade off because I'm plus three. Open plays a6, which means generally that b4 uh b5 might be played but if b5 is played that's bad because i can simply take with the knight open cannot take back the rook is not defended so that's my plan so i castled here queen side opened also castles and now i go with knight to d4 asking knights to be traded because if that happens i'll first take the queen eliminate the threat that's the only piece basically queen is probably the only piece which can let my opponent come back in the game or maybe it can be a knight as well sometimes with knights you never know where the folks are coming uh basically you know but you still cannot control the folks because a knight in the center controls eight squares so you never know what what place the knight would be hitting eventually what is the opens plan so you don't want to go into that situation that uh, a knight is there in the game or the queen so I want to trade off everything. Open goes with knight to e7 there first, connecting both the knights. So once I take, open replaces with the same knight. Now I go with knight to c2 as my plan was. Open plays queen to f7. And now comes knight to d4. Asking again, knight should be traded off. And if the open doesn't here, I will definitely take, which will weaken up the pawn structure as well, allowing me to take another pawn with a check. And then the situation is crumbling down very quickly. So open does take here, and again I take back with the queen itself, making sure my queen is again active. Uh, and now I'm uh, just a bishop up, uh, and that's what I need to, need to uh, make sure that I'm up after trading of everything. Open plays f5, and here I played c4. My plan is if the opponent takes, it's the checkmate. So open cannot take, so I can always play c4. And I'm waiting for opponent to play pawn forward as well, f4, because then I can trade and that would be nice for me that's what happens open plays f4 as expected and now i take with the pawn open takes back with the pawn again now i can take back this with the bishop it's completely fine it's defended with the queen but i took with the queen my idea is to trade off the queens if the queens are traded my bishop is still there i am a piece up why not trade off and i got the extra pawn again now so Queen plus extra pawn, uh, a bishop plus extra pawn I have. Also, if you notice, if the queen goes to a wrong square, it's a checkmate on c7 as well. So if the if the queen is not defending the c7 anymore, that is going to be a checkmate too. So up and understand that I'm using my queen throughout very wisely and have been moving it throughout on the board in all four directions. Up and decided to take off the queen rather than defending the c7 further. I take back with the bishop, open takes, now pushes for the pawn d4. Because of, of course, if opponent takes, I, I'll take the last piece away from the opponent and then it's bishop and I have extra pawns. That would be easy to win it from there. Here I play rook to d3 first, making sure the bishop is, the pawn is not allowed to be moved forward. Also, the pawn is on dark square. So sometime later in the game, I have a bishop, which is dark square. And I can take this pawn with the support of the rook, couple of pieces attacking it, only one defending it. So here comes c5, so that two are defending it now. And now I place my king to d2. King activity is always important in the end game, no matter 
if you have a piece extra piece or not king activity always makes sense because you never want your opponent to come down to e2 because if the rook comes to e2 the rook will be grabbing one of these pawns and that's what you don't never want to happen open now attacks the bishop which comes now to g3 which defends the pawn backwards as well so i'm still controlling the diagonal i'm still defending the pawn pawn is defending the bishop only g2 can be taken somehow uh, but that's very unlikely if the opponent somehow managed to come back and from g1 tries to take it that's a story for another day that's not happening open plays a uh, rook to d uh, king to d7 and now i offer two trade of the rooks which of course opponent denies but then i land up with a check moving the king upwards to c6 and here again give a check from c7 open moves simply to the dark square uh, there's no other option as well because uh, pawn is also standing so i have control of this and now i start to push a4 as well which opponent stops with a5 and now i get back my rook simply don't do anything fa fancy making sure that the opponent's rook isn't doing anything from here uh, and then open moves the king and again i give a check this time from f6 now open goes back to d7 and i just try to attack a pawn which open saves with the pawn on b6 and then i give a check and you notice how i made sure that open has placed all the pawns on the dark squares eventually i have a plan to keep my bishop and take these pawns as well if the open goes here i can simply go behind the pawn grab this and it's going to be end game but open moves king to c6 which is extremely bad because rook c7 is checkmate open cannot go anywhere i have controlled the seventh rank with a check the rook is defended with the bishop and light squares around it are already controlled with my pawn so open never got a chance back from the point i took that extra piece uh, and that's how you dominate a game when you get to have slight advantage in the opening uh, or the middle game as you can say i hope you enjoyed this video and it was instructive enough if it was please do subscribe to the channel as well it gives me extra motivation to put these videos on a daily basis even if you won't subscribe i'll definitely put a video daily that's who i am so i hope you enjoyed this let me know, know your feedback keep watching and sharing please do subscribe again as i say and i shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always thanks for your time Take care and bye-bye.